Well, good morning again and rec- welcome to Morning Magazine. This is Debbie B and I've got my very good friend Andrew Powell on the phone. He is our state MP for Glasshouse. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, my friend Debbie B. <laughs> How exciting to be interviewing you. Uh, it's it's going to be fun, I think. <laughs> yes, and I was just talking to you about being a Queensland Maroon supporter. I've been just been talking to Shane Moon a little while ago and um, he's a New South Wales supporter. Is Mooney a New South Wales supporter? He is a New South Wales supporter, and we beat him every year, and I want to beat him again this year. <laughs> <laughs> and the next song that I'm going to play is for Shane. It's Days Like This by Van Morrison, because oh, I know yeah. that he's a big Van Morrison fan, and I also know he's going to lose tonight. So, <laughs> well Excellent. But we've got more important stuff to talk about at the moment. Yeah, look, we've been pretty busy as a government. As people Absolutely. would know, it was 100 Day Day yesterday. So I was, we were going around the place wishing everyone a happy 100 days. Yes. Um, we had a lot of work to achieve in that 100 day and we did it. Yeah, I, I was pretty impressed by the performance, I have to say. Look, it was great to have that action plan, to hit the ground running and to say, look, these are the, the election commitments that we took to you, the people of Queensland. We are serious about implementing them. And, uh, you know, we put a number of them in that 100-day plan and we've delivered every one of them. No, oh, that's amazing. And you've been, he's been, you've been very stern. Like, a, as a group, you have been very stern and tough, but I think that's what we needed. Look, and that is very much the setting that we're in at the moment. We, as people would now know, when uh, Peter Costello and his team looked at the books, it was a lot worse than what we thought. A lot worse. I mean, oh, yes. Pretty, what we thought was pretty bad, but it is a lot worse. And so that has meant we've had to make tough decisions. Um, but the reality is, you know, we have also have to ensure that we keep frontline positions. Frontline positions are first, they're primary, and we're doing everything we can for that. We're doing everything to fight for every job we can, but we've got to make the tough decisions to turn this economy around. Look, we've done fantastic things. We've had Destination Q, a huge big tourism forum yep. up in Cairns, and I've just got back from Cairns last night, actually. I was up there doing some work around Cape York, yeah. And the feel, there's a real buzz in Cairns for the first time in, since I've been an MP. Um, and so that's great. We're turning the tourism industry around. We've got plans for the agricultural industry. We've got plans for the resource industry. And, and we're trying to get the construction industry going. And those of you out there in the real estate business, uh, 1st of July saw the removal of the $7,000 stamp duty on the primary place, place of residence. So that's hopefully going to year things up for the uh, real estate market as well. That was a brilliant move and I was talking to a real estate agent um, last month and nobody was doing anything until the 1st of July, like with buying. Yeah, um, look, that's, that's the downside of when you, you do say you're going to do something by a certain date, um, people sit on things and, and hopefully that means that July is going to be an absolute bonanza month for, it for is going to be a It is going to be a killer month for real estate, can I say, which, which is a great move, that's terrific, it's a good way to start the year. Look, the other one that people will hopefully be seeing, and if they're not, please let me know because it means council's not passing on the savings to you, but that is we've also removed the waste tax. Oh, so yes. So you have construction and demolition or commercial and industrial waste. So people like restaurants who pay to have their, their rubbish picked up by a commercial contractor, um, they're no longer having to pay $35 a tonne for that waste. Oh, that's so terrific. That's, that's a cost, you know, it's about three to $5,000 for a restaurant a year. Mm. Um, that's a cost that they were having to pass on to the customers. So one of the things that I've been able to do in my portfolio of environment is uh, remove that waste tax. So, again, part of our whole plan to cut the cost of living for people here in Queensland. Yeah, and you've been very, very busy as a minister too, haven't you? I certainly have. Um, but, look, the Premier sets very high standards and, and all of us knew that going into it. Um, certainly has an expectation that we deliver, that we have responsibility for what our departments do but then we also get it out and about across Queensland. So we had community cabinet in Townsville on Sunday and Monday. And then, as I said, I um, toddled on up to Cairns on Monday afternoon, had a number of meetings Monday afternoon and then really hit the ground running on yesterday regarding our plans for Cape York yeah. and replacing wild river declarations up there. Absolutely. And, I mean, you've been all around. I mean, you, I know that you had a lot to do with Gladstone as well just recently too. And, and we'll continue to have a lot to do yeah. with Gladstone, I suspect. Look, um, we, we want to make decisions in Gladstone that are based on science and not politics. Absolutely. So again, again, that may sometimes sound like we're making tough decisions or that there may be some short-term environmental damage, but the long-term gain will be far better for the environment up there. And so, you know, tough decisions. People will, will lambast me, I know, for some of the decisions we'll make, but I want to reassure people I'm doing it on the back of the science and understanding mm. what the science is saying. Yeah.
And Andrew, I've known you for a long time, and and you can be trusted. Uh, what you say, it, it's true. It's honest, and, and that's what I love oh, about careful, the government careful, now. Careful, you'll give politicians a bad <laughs> rep if you start saying we can be trusted. Oh, you can. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. You, I'm one of your fans. Oh, I appreciate that, Debbie. Yeah. Hey, listen. Can I just take a moment to let people know, particularly important local issue. Um, we've got a lot of pineapple growers in our. Pack. Yes. Um, in fact, we've got eighty percent of Queensland's pineapple producers in the electorate of Glasshouse, and a lot wow. of them there around Wamuran and Limba, and on up through to Glasshouse Mountains. Look, um, my good mate John McVeigh, the Agriculture Minister, has come out very strongly against the federal government's decision to consider importing fresh pineapples, not canned pineapples, fresh pineapples from Malaysia. Oh, good. <laughs> and he was up in up in the patch uh, Wednesday last week um, meeting some of my pineapple growers up there. And look, you know, we've got to push back on this, Debbie. We, if we let these things in, there, there's no saying what will happen to our fresh pineapple production here in Australia. There's things that go on in Malaysia, as there are in the Philippines. Just ask the, the Hawaiians who have imported some of these things, and it's ruined their crops. They get yeah. a, a fruit rot. And it, it destroys the crops forever and a day. So, you know, anyone out there who wants and enjoys our local, fresh, tasty pineapples, please let me know. We're trying to push back on the federal government who are considering this. Is there anything that we can do locally to, to I mean, like anything that, like a petition or anything like that that we can do yeah. that's going to make a difference? <clears throat> yeah, look, certainly. And, and I'm happy to help out on that front. The other way is to have a chat to Wyatt Roy, yep. um, your, your local federal member down there, about getting a petition going. But either one of us can do that. The mm. other thing is the Senate, thanks to Senator Ron Boswell, who's a real uh, staunch advocate for agricultural production here in Queensland, he's actually managed to have this issue referred to a Senate inquiry. So those um, people that know how Senate inquiries work, jump online, have a look at that and see if there's a way you can make a submission to that. Because mm. it, it's going to seriously impact on our economy in a big way if it happens. That's right. We're talking you know, thousands of jobs at the peak of the oh, harvest yeah. time. So it's not something that we can afford to lose. Yes, it's frightening. Well, we'll, we will work on that, Andrew. Thank you, Debbie. Appreciate that. Not a problem. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk about? I'm happy to keep chatting all morning. (laughs) (laughs) Look, um, that's probably all I've got for the moment. But, um, yeah, look, wish your listeners well. Okay. Uh, and great to get on 101.5. Tell me, how is your beautiful family? You have got how many children? I have five children. Five children, ranging from ages... 11 to 2. Isn't it amazing? And you find time to be a politician as well. But you've got a wonderful wife. I've got a stellar wife. Yes, you do. I wouldn't be able to do it without her. No. And um, look, you know, it's rough. As I said, I've I've been away for the last three days. Um, Just back in this morning. I'm going to try and spend a half hour with them now while they're on school holidays before I jump in the car and head off to meet the Premier who's up here on the Sunshine Coast today. Fantastic, Andrew. Well, say hello to Campbell for us. Will do, Debbie. And uh, do. tell him that we, we don't want the imported pineapples from overseas, please. Oh, he knows that message, but I'll <laughs> him on it again. Thank you, Andrew. You have a wonderful day, and thanks for Cheers, calling. Mate. Okay, bye-bye.